Why is lost media so fascinating? Why is it that seemingly normal and trivial pieces of media can be forgotten? But as soon as they are lost, they are now much more intriguing than when they could be viewed freely. But all of that interest and mystery, it makes it all the more satisfying when these things are eventually found. So here are 11 pieces of obscure lost media that's since been found. Cartoon Lost and Found A late night television special, ironically titled, Cartoon Lost and Found, aired on Nickelodeon sometime in 1990. The special starred famous actor Adam West, who would look through old film reels and try to piece together different old cartoons from the late 1950s and early 60s, where parts of these actual reconstructed cartoons would actually play, including scenes from The Mighty Hercules and even the anime Speed Racer with an English dub. The special was also apparently directed towards older audiences at the time as it contains some swearing from West, as well as him even addressing the audiences at times, claim that they once heard or saw these cartoons, and trying to create a nostalgic portrayal for these older viewers. However, the sad ironic twist is that this special about lost pieces of cartoons actually became lost media itself. The only known footage from the special that was still available was a short clip uploaded by Matthew Hassan, on his YouTube channel on January 19th, 2015, as well as some promo art and title cards from the show that were available. Even at this point though, the show was not even on IMDb. However, finally on September 18th, 2020, the entire special was uploaded by an anonymous user on the Internet Archive and can now be viewed online. Cruel Ghost Legend while many Japanese horror films have become fairly well known in America and the West in general, thanks to companies such as Criterion, with films like The Grudge, The Ring, and many others being pretty famous now outside of Japan, some films never really break out into the mainstream and remain obscure. This film, Cruel Ghost Legend, directed by Kazuo Hase, is one of these such films. Released in 1968, not much was known about the film other than a brief synopsis given about the plot, which was supposedly about a blood curse that would lead to an eventual suicide. Many people were interested in finding this film as it would have been one of the first of the early splatter movies, as they were just beginning to pop up in Japan around this time. The only known physical release of the film was on a VHS copy that was sold on the Japanese Amazon website for 15,000 yen, or roughly $122 at the time. However, the film is no longer available for purchase. But on March 17th, 2014, a VHS rip of the film was uploaded, although with no English subtitles. However, over six years later, on September 23rd, 2020, a Lost Media Wiki user named Tom underscore Servo uploaded the entire original Japanese broadcast of the film to his YouTube channel. Gay Blade. Recognized by many as one of the first LGBT themed video games ever to be released, Gay Blade was released in 1992 on Windows and Mac, and was a role playing game that revolved around quote, drag queens, queers, lesbians, and others that go on a mission into dungeons in order to rescue Empress Nelda. There was actually quite a lot of buzz around this game before and during its initial release, with many articles from mainstream media talking about the game. Although many years later after its release, it has since become less known and has faded into obscurity. That was until the founder of the LGBTQ Games Archive, Adrian Shaw, interviewed the game's developer Ryan Best in 2018, and he was able to provide a copy of the game along with the original manual. However, it wasn't until 2019 that Ryan Best found the original game files, which, thanks to the cooperation of the LGBTQ Game Archive, and a man named Matthias Oborski, they were able to create a playable version of the game, which has been uploaded to the Internet Archive as of January 17th, 2020, and is playable on Windows systems. Freaky. 
From 2004 to 2010, a New Zealand horror sci-fi TV series called Freaky was created by Avalon Productions. The show was about children who would, in one way or another, face some sort of scary situation that involved the paranormal in an episodic format. Based on the experiences of young audience members that watched the show as kids, it was very disturbing, and some episodes were said to be extremely graphic, such as with the sequence where children will be eaten alive by sharks. There were no home media releases of the show, and it only aired on New Zealand networks with a total of 39 episodes, although none of them could be found in their entirety. That was until March 14th, 2016, when a Reddit user named Golden Molars uploaded all of the known 39 episodes onto Mega. Kirby Family Kirby Family was a Game Boy Color game that was produced by Natsume, which would be included with a collection of 32 different patterns of characters from the Kirby franchise, which could be used in conjunction with a sewing machine that was made by Jaguar. The game was a spin-off of a very similar game called Mario Family, which was essentially the same thing, but with Mario characters. The game itself was revealed at Nintendo Space World 2001, and was set to release on September 10th, 2001, at a price of 6,800 yen, or 60 US dollars. However, likely due to poor sales of the Mario Family sewing game, Kirby Family was scrapped and was not even seen outside of this event, with only two screenshots being found online. However, on September 9th, 2020, there was an archive titled Platinum.7z, which was leaked on 4chan. Many unfinished and even lost Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs were found within this archive, and among them was a build of the Kirby Family game. The game is also thought to be fully functional and finished, and even works as advertised with the Jaguar sewing machine. Imp Inc. Produced by Charlie Bean and Chris Riccardi for Cartoon Network, Imp Inc. was a cartoon pilot that was only aired during the network's Big Pick weekend, which took place from August 24th to August 26th of 2001. After this initial airing, however, the show was never continued, and this pilot episode was lost and never aired officially again. All that was known about the plot itself was that it centered around three Imp characters who would grant wishes. And in this pilot episode, they would grant the wish of a couple to deliver rain to their dying crops. However, at the end of the episode, a meteor that the group was traveling on would end up crashing into the farm and destroy the crops that they helped to cultivate. There was also the ending theme song, which was found on SoundCloud, posted by Riccardi himself. However, this account has since been deleted and the song is still lost. However, on April 24th, 2015, a Lost Media Wiki user found Imp Inc. on a Spanish website, along with another Lost pilot called Major Flake, and both of these episodes were uploaded to YouTube. However, these episodes were both in Spanish, and it wasn't until the 19th of April, 2016, when YouTube user DuhDD uploaded the pilot in English. Lobo this cancelled fighting game for the Sega Genesis and SNES was developed by Ocean of America in 1996, and was based on the DC comic book series of the same name. However, despite being advertised and fully developed, the game was suddenly cancelled before its release. The game was known to be similar to Mortal Kombat as it used similar pre-rendered graphics that were shown in screenshots of the game. After the game didn't release though, the game faded into obscurity. However, in 2009, over 10 years after the game was cancelled, the Sega Genesis version of the game was found in a fully playable and realized state. Then on October 5th of 2014, the SNES version of the game was found, and both are still playable today on emulators. Peppermint Park an obscure direct-to-VHS puppet show was released in 1987 by the name of Peppermint Park. A total of six volumes of the series were released. The series itself was about various puppets along with some recurring live-action characters, and was very comparable to Sesame Street, most likely being heavily inspired by it to put it nicely, even having a character also named Ernie. The show was directed by John Horton and produced by Mark V Productions, 
with the puppets themselves being created by Dan O'Quinn. However, most likely due to poor sales, the series was cancelled at just six volumes, which only contained one episode each. The VHS releases of the show were also subsequently cancelled, and went out of print, making them very hard to find. However, they were all eventually found, and uploaded in their individual volumes by YouTube user Ice Roserade, and in a combination of the low quality of the episodes, as well as the design of the puppets, these episodes can be pretty creepy. Attack of the Giant Vulture Created as part of Nickelodeon's short films by Short People series, Attack of the Giant Vulture was a two-minute short that was aired from around 1998 until sometime in the 2000s. However, even with it airing for multiple years, the show became lost as it fell into obscurity. The short itself was about a group of kids who were hunted down by a giant vulture who was trying to capture and eat them until eventually in the end the kids are able to catch the vulture and eat him instead. The only way to view the short after it stopped airing was by going to one of Nick's creative lab comp reels in person where they were said to have the film. However, it was not available until 2013 when MySpleen user Snowpeck uploaded all of the short films by short people that aired during a 1999 airing of the series. Now the short can be viewed on YouTube as well as a behind the scenes look at the production of the film. Zeus, Carnage Heart Second. Released for Windows in 1999 by R. Dink, Zeus Carnage Heart Second was a sci fi simulation PC game that came out only in Japan. The game was said to take place in a distant future where wars are fought by mechas called Overkill Engines. In the game, the player could also purchase upgrades and different parts for these robots. However, players themselves would not be able to control them as it was more so a strategy game, where you would command different units and tell them where to go or what to do. The PC requirements were also known as well as the fact that players could actually trade units or overkill engine data through email. However, the game was not a commercial success and it was very rare due to low production and it was considered lost as only screenshots and the game's box were found. But that all changed on September 8th, 2019, when a user called Felix Ferret on the Lost Media Wiki Discord found and posted a link of the game, which was posted on the Legends World Gaming Forum. The Substitute. In 1993, a TV movie made for USA Network was aired called The Substitute not to be confused with another film called The Substitute, released in 1996. The film is notable because it is the debut of famous actor Mark Wahlberg, who was still known as Marky Mark from Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. The film itself was about a high school English teacher who, after her husband cheats on her, goes on a killing spree. The movie never had a home media release in America, however, although there were VHS releases in Argentina, Germany, and Japan. However, there were still no known copies of the film, and it was considered lost media. That was until an anonymous user found the movie on PrimeWire in 2017, and it has since been uploaded to YouTube, albeit in fairly low quality. As always, thank you guys for watching this video, and I would like to thank all of you guys for voting in the poll I put up. Uh, it was really cool to see, you know, what videos you guys want to see. This topic definitely won by a large margin, which I kind of expected, but I'm still definitely open to doing these other topics, and I probably will get to them in the future at some point, hopefully soon. But I also have a couple other big projects I'm working on, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. We also just hit recently over 5k subs, which is absolutely crazy. Thank you guys so much for that. Anyway, this is Source Brew, and I'll catch you guys next time.